I'm not quite going the speed I was hoping to be, honestly. Uh, almost lost it. It started going like way north. I didn't want it pointing north, but it just was doing that because uh, the contents inside are a little, it's a little lopsided. Uh, the weight is a little on one end, I think, than the other. But I mean, it looks kind of like we're getting there. I think as we get closer to the edge of the atmosphere, we'll speed up a lot more, especially with this rocket. Uh, but that's why we have a whole other stage underneath this, which is meant to get us to Minmus. In fact, the actual lander itself, the, the Unity Science Vessel itself, is pretty capable of uh, going around. And one thing to keep in mind is that you need less fuel to get around on Minmus than you do on the moon because of the lower gravity. So it's kind of a, a give and take thing. I don't know how well this is gonna work. So this is our first mission. It's it's uh, definitely up to Gusterum and Burfury. I think they've done a good job preparing, but I certainly haven't. All right, let's get rid of these. These will fall back down to the planet. Boom, okay, and let's get rid of that stage, and let's go, 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 get out of that. Okay, uh, I do need to readjust my orientation. There we go, I think that's better. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's that's the Magnus rover. Oh, it's attached to the bottom. You are gonna laugh when you see how I actually have to, uh, how I actually have to maneuver this. It's gonna be, it's gonna be something else. It's gonna be pretty funny. I don't know if we'll even get into orbit with this, though. I may need to add more power, which would be uh, not surprising, actually, because between all of the improvements we've added up here and the Magnus Rover, it is quite a heavy craft. We are starting now to pick up speed, but it may not be, uh, may not be enough. Strange cut, I know, but uh, it's because I got up into space. I was actually managing to get a orbit and I had plenty of fuel to get to Midmus. However, my game crashed and it reverted me all the way back to launch. And I was like, nope, not taking that much time again because it was like at least 10 minutes of trying to get into orbit and stuff. And it, it wasn't very fun. So I just added more power. We're gonna try it this way. So, I mean, this makes a lot more sense, right? Hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, please don't blow up. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, also, totally hasn't blown up yet. That's probably the most important part. Lots of wings uh, for control. Just throwing that out there. I don't like when things like to wobble. Okay, please don't blow up. Let me get a mild spin. I don't think that's going to work. It might. That'll work. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Maybe it'll still work. <laughs> uh, uh, this is what happens when I set up my staging properly, but I forget that I have that as the next stage, and I accidentally hit spacebar. Uh, surprisingly, actually, not too bad. Uh, but I think that is going to cost us. And unfortunately, I forgot to put a bigger engine under this, but I think it should be fine. Yeah, we, sh we should be fine. This freaking rocket puts out so much thrust, 2,500, uh, that I'm kind of surprised I hadn't started using this earlier. Then again, I guess we just recently unlocked it. In real science space aerodynamics news, uh, actually, there's been a quite a few. It's been a bad week for space stuff. The... Uh, uh, Artemis, I think it was called. It was an unmanned mission to go resupply the uh, space station. I think, I think it was the inter yeah. It was supposed to resupply something. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to resupply the International Space Station. I was actually watching it uh, on its launch. It, after six seconds of launching, it just exploded. Uh, it was very Kerbal, and thankfully, like I said, it was unmanned, so it wasn't. It wasn't like oh, well that sucks. But the unfortunate thing is that Space Plane 2, which was a prototype for a commercial space plane uh, from Virgin, actually had an, had an issue when it was doing its flight test and uh, one of the pilots unfortunately died. The other one made it out, but it just it sucks. It's been a bad week for space. But what I was going to say is that, you know, overall... Uh, 
what we just did with that giant rocket isn't too far off from what they're doing, you know, IRL. They're getting ready to test the, I think it's called the Orion, which is a really cool uh, new delivery system, basically. It's a rocket that has so much power, it's meant to get you not only into space, but also to other planetary bodies. So um, I guess the, the best way to put it is that it uses so much more um, power that you're able to get better tonnage. So say you're going to send people to Mars, for instance, which is the, the purpose of the thing, uh, or one of the many purposes of the thing. It's going to be used for quite some time. It's kind of like how the Saturn rocket was used for so long. But they, uh, you know, they're, they're, when you go to Mars, you have so much stuff that you take with you because you have to keep the crew alive that, uh, you know, not only are they looking into ways to you know put people to sleep for long periods of time kind of like a hibernation thing it's sci-fi stuff basically but the this new rocket will allow the amount of tonnage that they need to take with them to mars to actually be possible and they're going to be testing that i think out of uh, texas sometime soon it's just one of those really really cool kind of things that you think about like oh man i you know i really like kerbal and I really like doing all this cool stuff with rockets, but you you got to remember this stuff is like happening in real life too. These awesome uh, aerodynamicists and and phys 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 not physicians physicists. There we go. Got there eventually. They're all working to do stuff like this, and the fact that they're working on a, a method of getting people to other planets, I think, is really cool because I sci-fi is like my favorite subject as far as uh, storytelling is concerned. I do a lot of fantasy stuff, but sci-fi is like my thing. I just I I can't get enough of it, which is why I like Stargate so much. You can see the the telescope there I, I you know it's funny it's like probably switch to it and find my craft and take a picture of it uh that would be kind of funny but what i'm doing here just so you know in case you're getting confused or if you've never seen a mission to min miss before what i'm doing is i'm just making my orbit uh, much wider uh, i'm setting it to about nine hundred thousand. it just happens to be the number i set it on it doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's semi-circular but the reason i'm doing this is because uh, when you have a larger orbit like this it's easier to do a plane change and i need to change into the plane of midmus which you see kind of does this we're on this flat plane it's kind of on an angle here so we need to get at least close to that don't have to do that but i i want to in order to to pick a really good landing spot i'm looking for you know a, a spot where my rover can do some work and that's uh, flat enough that i can test this landing procedure for the first time because i can't actually land with the thing on the bottom i have to get really close to the surface like a couple inches above it decouple the rover from the bottom of the the thing so it gently falls down and taps the surface of the planet or of the moon and uh from there it's it's all about like moving just far enough away, not blasting off because that would be way too much, uh, way too much thrust going on, and it would actually blow things away from the rover, which isn't good. Uh, you can like blow pieces off of it, such as um, I don't know, like the uh, oops. I totally didn't mean to adjust that. I, I had it perfect. Uh, the solar panels and stuff like you don't want to, you don't want to blow those off uh, of the the rover using your own engines from your spacecrafts. That would be a very terrible idea. So you got to be really careful with it. So I got to figure out the best way to go about doing it. And uh, it, it it's gonna be interesting. That's for sure. So I want to, like I said, I want to make sure I'm at the correct spot to do this. Otherwise, it'll totally screw me up. Uh, that's not perfect, but it's probably as close as I'm going to get. So now, uh, Minmus is over there. Minmus travels uh, from the right to the left. So as a counterclockwise, pretty much the same as the moon. So I kind of have to aim in front of it, obviously. And I don't know how in front of it I need to aim. Probably a little further. Yeah, that's getting better. Uh, actually... Apparently, Min Mist moves incredibly slowly. I thought I would have to aim much further away, but I don't think I do. Ooh. Take, 
gave me an encounter with the moon on my way back. It's not what I wanted. Um, uh, it's still pretty high periapsis. But I think it'll work. I think it's... Yeah, that'll. I think that'll work just fine. So let's line it up. I need to... 605 meters? That's not too bad. I have plenty of fuel to be able to do it, too. And I was going to be a lot tighter on fuel before I redesigned the launch stage. Again, because my game crashed. You know, when, when designing real spacecraft, they don't leave much margin for error when it comes to how much fuel they use. Uh, they do a lot of calculations, and they they get it pretty close to dead on. Not not always, depending on you know what kind of mission it is. They, they'll often put a bit extra fuel on just in case. But for the most part, once they're in space, they use monopropellant to do a lot of uh, maneuvering around. They don't really necessarily use like a, a main thruster like I'm doing now. But that's pretty much because most things that leave uh, the Earth and go outside of the Earth Moon area don't necessarily end up coming back it's not something that they uh they're doing at the moment like we're not sending people to mars and bringing them back but if we were to do that the fuel would be calculated so perfectly and the timing on it uh with orbits would have to be calculated perfectly it would uh it would be crazy because you, you gotta remember the not all of the orbits of the bodies within our solar system are on the same plane a lot of them are on weird planes and some of them aren't necessarily perfect circular orbits around the sun so uh especially with with relation to earth so you would have to plan that kind of stuff out like how how am i gonna do some of these uh you know maneuvers to get to mars and such and when is the best time of year to do it and when's the best time of year to come back so it's very complicated but it interests the heck out of me because it's so awesome and we might just make it oh look at that four things of fuel left four units of fuel and we have a tight encounter i'm quick saving that was perfect that i don't think i could have done that better i i'm look I'm being honest with you, I was just talking about making it tight. That's doing it pretty tight. That's pretty much as close as I wanted it to potentially get. It's going to take me a lot to slow down and actually get an orbit around this sucker, but uh, let's see how just, or just how much I will need. Whoa. About 300 meters a second. It's not too bad, actually. Uh, let's aim myself in the correct direction. I could utilize my fuel reserves that I have for my lander and put them into this engine, but I feel like uh, my other uh, thrusters are probably a bit more uh, useful. I, I have four of them as opposed to one, which is what I'm using now, and it is different than the last time. So that'll use up that. Okay, so then we're just going to... I don't need to rotate it. We just let that go, and then we're going to let the second piece... That was awesome. The sound echoes through space. I totally didn't mean to do that, but that was the coolest thing I think I've ever done. That was so good. See, I have way more uh, weight to thrust ratio. Thrust to weight ratio, whatever it is. Because I'm using four engines. Before I was using one in the center, but using one in the center wouldn't uh, allow me to place the Magnus rover in there. And you can also see that the Magnus rover, now that we're a little closer, has to sit at a at a weird angle. Uh, the things here need to be underneath the engines because I couldn't get it quite far away. Uh, it's just the design of this lander. So. I'll, in future landers to other bodies, I'll probably use a different design. However, I feel like this one is working quite well for me. Also, this can put us on a weird plane for Minimus, but I don't think we'll have much of an issue. I stocked up well on food and water in case... Oh gosh, that was bad. Let me, let me get rid of that. That's fine. Retrograde. Uh, I stocked up on plenty of food and water and supplies for these two Kerbals. One, because I was bringing two Kerbals and I haven't necessarily done uh, 
such an intensive mission as far as supplies are concerned as of yet. And I really wanted to make sure that uh, I, I would have enough if I if I had to stay here for a bit, maybe for a rescue mission. So that was definitely a concern. Uh, the, the other thing with it is I just wanted to make sure that if I if I needed to send another mission, that I have enough reserves that maybe I could send an unmanned mission and just resupply the science vessel uh, from there. I think that would probably be a better a better way of doing it in the future, but it was, yeah, it was all planned out, especially with this rover. I think this rover in particular, I've planned uh, with a lot of contingencies. Like if something breaks, I've got plenty of ways to fix it. Uh, if something happens where I'm unable to gather the science, I have ways of figuring out where it is and getting the science that way. So it's going to be quite fun. Uh, however, ooh, do I have lights on the... Oh, all of the lights light up. It's beautiful. I love it. Even even those? It's hard to tell. Yep, even the even my headlights on the rover. I got... Magnus is just one of the coolest things that I've built. I can't wait to use this thing. we got to find a suitable landing spot. I'm thinking somewhere flat, uh, potentially, actually, right there. I think that uh, would be the perfect place to land, because then we can explore all this stuff with our rover and just keep our our main thing right in the middle, just constantly be ferrying the science back to our Kerbals. This can be awesome. Uh, you may ask, who's driving the rover? Are, are Kerbals in the thing, duh? The rover does have a, a, a way to communicate back with Kerbin if it needs to, so if it needs to be remotely driven from there, it's, that's another contingency plan that they've come up with. Uh, but for the most part, I think our, our Kerbals are in here, and uh, this guy, he's just ready to go, right? The other one, on the other hand, he's he's the one doing everything. This is this is that guy, you know what I'm talking about? This is the guy that 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 does all the work, especially when it comes to remote guidance of our uh, of our awesome rover. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Okay, I'm gonna land there. Uh, I just have to set up a maneuver node first.